All right, you maggots, listen up. On my last video, two people called me on something. Uh, one guy, I said EEPROM, and I meant EEPROM. Uh, what, what's going on is uh, my mind is on the, the fish tank. I need to take my fish tank down. Uh, I think it's 10 years it's been up, and the last three, it's been pathetic. You can't control anything. It's got the uh, old tank syndrome, which is caused by the gravel. I know a lot of people tell you it's caused by the film on the walls of the tank or on the plants. It's actually in the gravel. As the gravel gets old, it, it gets fuzzy with all kinds of um, material. And that material, uh, even if you swish the gravel and vacuum it, it stays stuck to the gravel. And it sits there and it rots and it messes up the tank. You can control, you can measure the parameters of the tank. And they'll be a little, a little wonky, but they're bad. You take a new fish and put it in your tank and it'll die. But I just wanted to tell you, the, the old tank syndrome it changed your gravel after so many years. Now, uh, this is os, Osmo Cal Coat or Osmo... This is what I used the last time. First, I put the tank, I put in uh, regular gravel from Petco or one of them, and then I put my plants in the, in the gravel, and I stuck those plant tabs, and they were very expensive. So then I read online you could use this material if you put it in little capsules. So I ordered the capsules, and I put one every two inches in the, in the soil, and everything was percolating along. But what happens with every tank? When it, it, even if it's successful, uh, you get too many fish, too much poop. Uh, like I said, it gets down in the gravel. You can gravel wash the gravel, but over a period of time, the gravel just gets saturated uh, with this crap, and it messes the tank up. So this time, I'm sort of going with the dirty tank guy's idea. I'm going to put sand in there because it really blocks stuff from getting down into the into the substrate and I'm going to use this this um, this fertilizer in capsules first I'm going to put some on the bottom of the tank and then put the sand over it. that's the starting layer and then use capsules from then on and the sand it, it keeps stuff from just penetrating down most of the uh, fish poop and, and, and broken leaves and stuff will stay on the surface you can vacuum it off there's just more options now, I thought about a dirty tank, and the reason I don't want to do it is the first few weeks, uh, the dirt gets up through the sand, or, or just, just say the water from the dirt with the min, uh, mater, uh, minerals or whatever get up through the sand, and they keep making the water uh, ammonia. I don't want that. I want to go right into where my old, my old guppies that I've had for 10 years uh, have a new home, and it's sort of the same idea. In other words, you have a good substrate, and then you put some type of fertilizer in it to keep the plants healthy. And here's, this is a 10-year-old Necru, Necru, I think, light. And it's dusty. It needs to be clean. But let me get it in the frame. Uh, I, I, I went on a group. I, I think it was the Planet, Planet Tank group. And one of the Shoot from the Hip experts went right after me. Oh, that, that light doesn't have enough lumens. See, these guys, they throw these words around. Well, I had figured out how many LED bulbs are on the Nikru, Nikru, whatever it is. Uh, it's become very popular, th this model. Uh, it, it's one of the top companies now. I bought one when it was when the company was new. Nobody heard it. Heard it. I bought the a light. Uh, I switched the light to uh, uh, an analog supply rather than a switcher because it was messing my radios up. But I, I put it on the, on the fish tank, and I, I saw immediate plant growth uh, versus my really good fluorescent lights. I had, I had dual, a dual bulb fluorescent light, and it wasn't putting out as much as the knee crew. And then with the knee crew, uh, I went and got a, a, a variable um, unit you could hook on it, and what it does is it, it allows you to adjust the brightness of the light besides changing the amount of hours. So uh, this next adventure into the fish tank should go a lot better than the last time. It went good the last time. I had a lot of plant growth. And then all of a sudden, you get to like the second year, and the tank starts to choke. And you can do all the same things. You can do a water change. Uh, you can add fertilizer. And what's happening is you've got too many fish. 
too much fish poop. And you can change the water to get rid of that, but it's already too late. Uh, all that fish poop and that buildup is in the is in the gravel, and it was it wasn't a coarse gravel. It was a, what, it, but it was it wasn't fine enough to keep stuff from getting down through it. And I I was at the in the beginning I was stirring the gravel to get the the stuff to come up and get pulled into the filter, and uh, that only makes it go deeper. Now I have uh, the Malaysian trumpet snails in here, and. When I was thinking about getting a dirty tank uh, or switching to a dirty tank, I went reading, and the, the expert, and then I found that he is not that great of an expert, but he passes himself off an expert. I won't tell you what the guy's name is, but uh, he, him and another woman said that the, um, was it Malaysian trumpet snails put holes in plants. Never saw that happen. I had several kinds of plants. Uh, I had those. They're still alive in the tank. The guppies are still alive. I have a 10-gallon tank. I'm going to run my filter in the in the in the 20 gallon long uh, with a with a sponge on it and and pick up that bacteria. Then I'm going to yeah, for a couple of days and then I'm going to move that water into the 10 gallon and that filter over to the 10 gallon with that heater and then move my fish over there and then set up the new tank or the old tank. Uh, I'm rebuilding it now. Uh, one of the things that went bad was the there's a a, a, a a hinge on the lid, the light, the glass, and it's it it it's like thirty dollars to fifty dollars to replace the hinge. Here it is. Here, this is the one half. All right. So so people want thirty dollars. Now I found a place with shipping and handling twenty two dollars for a replacement hinge, but the stuff has really gone up. Now this stuff has only gone up a dollar fifty in ten years, and this is really good fertilizer. But you have to find a way to keep it down in the gravel. And one of the ways to be able to get it down in there is you put it in these little zero zero uh, tablets you can buy on eBay. They're empty. They're pills. They're two halves. You pull them apart. You put your, your fertilizer in. You put the caps together. You put them down into the uh, substrate. And then it dissolves. And then it leaves the, the fertilizer real deep. Now, originally, you put some on the bottom of the tank and then add your sand on top. So in other words, that's 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 how I'm going with it. And hopefully I don't get too many guppies this time and uh, the uh, the tank doesn't uh, peak out. And I've done fish tanks over the years and in the past I would get really good plant growth using plant taps, but after a year and a half the tank would start to choke. And it was because I had more fish. And uh, in, in some cases, of black mollies, or Yucatan mollies. And uh, the plants would be doing really good. And all of a sudden, you just see them, even using plant tips, uh, you see them spreading along the bottom of the tank. And all of a sudden, bang, it hits a wall. You could, I, And that's what water changes each week. That's what changes the filter media each week. Uh, what happens is, I'm telling you, that gravel gets just saturated. Now, you say, well, the, the walls of the tank, well, that's what the snails do. The snails keep the walls of the tank clean, and yes, there is some algae on the walls. Uh, I usually leave it on the walls of the tank if it's not real long and stringy, uh, and just keep it off. Just keep the algae off the clean front of the tank for viewing purposes. And I just want to tell you uh, that argument I had with the the over the LEDs. What I did was I went and read on the LEDs that are in this unit, and you can see there's a lot of LEDs. All right, some of these might be going black. I don't know. But in other words, I added up the LEDs and how much lumens each LED was. And before I even posted, and one of those guys, he just had to come out, a Mr. Know-it-all. He had the, at the time, he had the best light. So he could throw it up there, but I have the blah, blah, blah light. It has eight big LED bulbs. Meanwhile, look at that knee crew. They said, well, you know what we could do? We could put a hundred cheaper LEDs in there and get more light than his than the, the eight or six whatever was in that other unit. I don't want to mention the name, but uh, I'm looking at these LEDs now. I got to look at them closer. They do look like they're going hollow. And what happens to an LED? Uh, little LEDs over a period of time, um, they they sort of go black, and they they still light, but they don't put out as much light. I'm gonna have to check that over. But that Niku light. I showed you, it was 38 bucks. And as soon as I powered it up, it knocked out every radio in the house. 
So that's when I built that power supply back there. Let's see if we can see it in the frame. See that on the right-hand bottom, that power supply is a computer supply. It's got an analog transformer in there and, and some stuff. And that's, that's what actually powers the fish tank. The fish tank's there. It's really sad. I'm in the process of tearing it all down. But that's one of my other hobbies. It's always been a hobby that's been there for me was the fish. You know, you sit there before you go to bed and you watch them swim around. Uh, every few weeks you see new babies in there. If you've got guppies or platies or mollies, it's a pretty good hobby, but it's very expensive. And you got to do a lot of reading. Uh, don't use any of the buckets or anything for the fish tank for anything else in the house because it'll have a soap residue. There's a steep, steep, steep learning curve. Now, I spent my whole life from eight years old, I had a fish tank all the way up to now, on and off. Couple, there were a couple years in between, but at one point, I had the entire house full of fish tanks. And then it became a job. Every night I come home from work, I had to do water changes and things like that, and uh, scoop out the, the uh, babies and put them in a different. It was just a job. I also built uh, fish tanks that hung on the wall. Uh, I almost went into business making that stuff. It was called Executank. Uh, I, I, I can only tell you all the escapades dealing with plastic companies and having them make me special types of uh, uh, filtration units. And that, because the original filtration units, if you go way back, were really stupid. We used a glass wool instead of polypropylene. Polypropylene? Polyethylene? Poly, poly something. The, the poly, polyfill, the stuff used in, uh, in pillows. Anyway, uh, the hobby has come a long way to uh, set a carbon, um, carbon, you, you bought carbon material uh, for the, along with the, in the filtration instead of uh, charcoal. Over, everything's changed over the years. And then for a while there, there were bags that you could put your charcoal in and zip it closed and it made it neater. And then later on, they, they started disposable uh, plug-in uh, filtration cartridges. And then uh, external uh, canister, canister filters. I, I was at a place, uh, a guy gave me a really good book. Um, I, mean, I, I think the name was Dupla. And how I remember uh, this one person's mother used to say, Dupa. Uh, I think it was uh, Polish or U Ukrainian uh, for, for dumbass, Dupa. And I, I, Dupla was the company, and they made bio balls. They were the first ones to make bio balls. Other people were using girls. Uh, hair curlers. It's a big, 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 big hobby. It's still fairly popular. It comes in and out of favor. You can get a lot of stuff, uh, yard sale or uh, Craigslist now and then at a really good price. That's where I got my stand from. But all my stuff has to be vacuumed, cleaned, reset up again. But I just want to tell you, uh, the, the old tank syndrome I've narrowed it down to it's from the gravel. And I, I'm pretty sure if I go with sand, I'm going to get more time out of the fish tank before it peaks out. And you know right away, the plants are growing, but they're not growing as fast as they were. The fish, uh, like guppies, they're mating, but not as many babies. Not It's starting to peak. See, what happens is the feedback to the plants, the feedback to the fish is telling them, uh, the environment isn't good enough for you to expand or to tell the fish to have more babies. And then you, you measure the parameters of the water, pH, and uh, pH, and then there's the uh, ammonia level. It passes. But you know that tank is getting bad. And if you go buy new fish and bring them home and put them in and, you know, you acclimate, the, acclimate them to the water, they'll die the next day. There's something in the water uh, that the test kits don't test for. And they call it old tank syndrome. And everybody, a lot of people know about it. I won't say everybody knows about it, but a lot of people know about it. But that's what, in my mind, uh, with the last guy saying, I said, EE -E problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to show everybody uh, my EEPROM eraser that I built. You know, it gives you an idea. You got, you got to dig up a sterilizer bulb and some type of ballast or way to light it. And you can take, you can go old school and you can reprogram uh, your EEPROMs for your older microprocessors instead of having to buy one. And then you can build yourself a programmer. I think I showed you my programmer. I did everything. I didn't care if my programmer took 
two hours to make an EEPROM, uh, to go into a into a, a cable television box to get all the channels. Someone says, oh, uh, mine does it in 20 seconds. No, yeah, yeah, it does in 20 seconds. But you don't know how to build the decoder for the decoder box for the cable company. You don't know how it works. See, I put I spread out my knowledge in certain areas, and uh, when I don't know an area, I, I, I wait, I try to find more information and learning curve. And you'll find a lot of people, they don't know anything. <laughs> and then you're, 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 you're looking for that guy, man. That guy gives you just a tidbit. Or I know a guy, and he tells you the guy's name. And then you talk to him, and he pulls out books. Here, take this home. Or go find this one. You write the name down. And now with the Internet, you can find it as a PDF. You don't even have to buy it. And uh, that's why I learned about the uh, dirty, dirty tanks years ago when it first started. Uh, it was a woman that I, I can't think of her name. Uh, uh, with a W, Westerster, whatever the hell her name is. She came up with the whole concept. Now there's this other guy that he, he caps her idea with sand, and other people do too. You can't find who come up with capping it with sand because there's so many copycats. But when this all first started taking off again, I was right there. And I said, you know what, let me get a fish tank because I like the technical aspect of the fish tank. There, you know, you can get into filtration. You can get into lighting. Uh, uh, Steve Manzer, he's into... Uh, like controls. Well, there, there you can control the lights. There's lights you can buy where you can make them slowly ramp up the light, uh, go on bright, then ramp back for the afternoon or whatever. You, you can you can set the lighting for the plants as to, as though they're actually in in a swamp. You can have the light slowly come up in the morning, and then at noon time you can hit it with the most uh, amount of lumens, and, and then you can have it taper off. And you can also go, some of the, this light has blue in it, has blue LEDs for night lighting. And you can you can give the fish a little bit of night light. They can still go and sleep if they want, or they can, you know, float around and do whatever they do in the dark. But it, it's another one of those hobbies that has stuff that does overlap in electronics. And I like, you know, uh, fertilizer. I was, I was hoping a Walmart had it, and they have it. And this is the stuff. And the last time uh, I sold part of the bottle to an Amish woman, she was all excited because sometimes it is hard to find uh, because they get it in at the beginning of, of summer and then this stuff sells out and they don't restock it. And I got it. I got the, the empty pills coming. Uh, I'm going to order some sand. Uh, oh, and you can't just go get sand at Walmart anymore. Uh, the woman, she, she didn't know how to explain it to me. She just says it didn't come in yet. So I go looking for another guy, and I want an explanation. I actually found another woman. She says, is that girl down there? I said, yeah. She says, she's really good. I said, oh, okay. She just said, it's not coming in yet. So then she spotted a guy. She says, he says, he's the manager for over there. So I got to talk to him, and he got confused. He kept looking up uh, miracle Grow pl uh, plant soil, and he didn't even realize it's in the store, and it's outside. I knew that. I'm like, no, 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 sand. Play sand. And then he goes, no, we don't carry that. He says, you have to order it. And it'll deliver it right to your house. So I'm, I'm good for that because it's 50 pounds. And I only need 30, but it is what it is at this point. But a 50-pound bag of sand is almost 30 bucks. Yeah, it's stuff's expensive. And, you know, I kept thinking, oh, I'll tear the fish tank down. But I still have guppies left over from my original batch. And hopefully some of them make it. You know, but it's, it's a pretty good hobby, tropical fish. But it's got a learning curve. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand... Uh, forget filtration, just pH and, uh, let's see, pH, this is the other one, pH and, oh, and ammonia. When the fish exhales, ammonia. When the fish poops, ammonia. Now, that ammonia gets turned to nitrites, nitrates, nitrites from the plants. Uh, wait, nit no, no, the bacteria turns to nit the nitrates, to nit nitrate, nitrites to nitrates. Nitrates are eaten by the plants, so it's a complete closed system. And I told you, except for the gravel, the gravel becomes uh, impacted with crap over about a year and a half, depending on how much you feed the fish. And then uh, you're gonna have to tear the tank down, and then you got to put the fish somewhere. And say, and it's it's a it's a job and a half. But using sand, if you keep up with it, you probably I think you can get. I, I probably I'm pretty sure I can get 
squeeze five years of good plant growth out of the tank, uh, not having too many fish and not overfeeding. I think that's it. All right.